Hello, I'm your host, Bethany Barber, Executive Director of the Legal Aid Society of the Orange County Bar Association, and I'm so happy you could join us for a new episode of The Domino Effect, where our local nonprofit organization will sit with government officials to discuss pressing issues affecting the community. In this episode, the Legal Aid Society and Orange County District 4 Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero will have a discussion on housing law, valuable community partnerships for seniors, and legal aid services offered for every member of the community, including those who speak English as a second language. Perpetual goodness goes a long way, and every person, company, and organization has an ability to positively impact Orange County residents, making Central Florida one of the most desirable destinations in the nation. We each have a responsibility to lend a helping hand when possible, continuing the cycle of growth and improvement in our community. It's the domino effect. Hello, I'm Laura Sanchez, staff attorney at the Legal Aid Society. Thank you, Commissioner Gomez Cordero, for being here today. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about your district. You are District 4, yes. correct? Uh, tell me a little bit about the area that that encompasses. Oh, yes. Well, um, District 4 is Lake Nona, okay. Avalon Park, Meadowood, oh my God. Water, Waterford Lakes, also, we have part of Narcusi, because it's divided between three and four, District three, okay. uh, all behind the airport, uh, Weatherby, uh, South Chase, some of the um, OBT and Yon Yon until um, Central Park. Central so, oh my God. Um, so that's a big area. Yes, yeah, Central Florida Parkway. Wow. Yes, so it's I'm, a big area. So with that many people, mm -hmm. right, under your umbrella. Yes, up to 250,000 people already. Or residents. Wow. What do you think? So I kind of I wanted to start with talking to you about housing with so many people under your district. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen a lot, yes. especially after the pandemic, yes. uh, with the spikes in rent, uh, the pricing of the homes, the interest rates. What have you seen from your constituents, or what have they been complaining about um, re regarding housing in that area? Well, uh, my my district is practically. A new district, like, you know, a lot of areas are medium to high, medium to high, medium you know, high income. Uh, I have few, maybe little, few low income, which, you know, it doesn't, like, get, let's put it that way, like some funds and, and, and services for different, from different agencies because they are, um, the category is like they are medium. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I still have people that are suffering for, you know, a lack of housing, a, you know, apartments, you know, that we have been growing so fast. I mean, Central yes. Florida have been growing so fast. You know, we have um, heard in the, in the news and in the reports that we received from the airport, from, you know, uh, different other um, agencies that we have been growing so fast that we don't have enough you know, homes to put everyone coming in. But on top of that, you know, COVID came and then now everything is like, mm -hmm. you know, like in backup. So, uh, well, we need to, to, to bring some housing Something. and some apartments and some, you know, um, alternative for, for the people that are moving here and also for the people that we already have here. Right. Uh, one of the things that, I, that is happening in, in my district, and I can, you know, say that a lot of homeless are moving you know, to 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 the wood side and to the side in, in east, you know, in the east side, which so is that, yeah. District Three, District Four, and District Five. Uh, but we still have to work with them. We still have to, you know, get some services for them and so. And saying that is because the rent is so high. I mean, we have a lot of people mm -hmm. and families, mom with the kids, living in the cars. Yes. Why? Because not that they don't work. They have a job. It's just that it's not enough. To you know, to put the more. rent, uh, the application. Let's start from the application, mm -hmm. right? Which is what two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars, and then they need to pay also, or you know, the fee for the background checks for that everybody that is sixteen years <laughs> and older in the home, mm -hmm. which is expensive. It could be over fifty dollars each, right? Wow. And then the first month, I've, if you know, if you are. Um, you know, honor to, or, or, or your, your application pass, well then, 
you have to pay the first month, last month, the security deposit, deposit security, mm -hmm. and then you have to all have all this money into that. That would be easily between five thousand to eight thousand dollars, because guess what? The rent is high now, mm -hmm. so it's not less than fifteen hundred dollars that you have to Definitely. you know get for a rent. I don't know an apartment, two two bedrooms apartment. So that's why we have. And we will continue having people homeless because not that they don't have a job. They have a job, but it's not enough to save, to maintain themselves, you know, and pay all the pay all whatever the they have to pay um, during the month. And then also save to, you know, get their own apartment because it's too high. All the, it's you know, the high. money that they have, to, they have to come up with. And I know not. So not having a, a lot of people think that if you live in your car, you, you don't have a job. Or if you can't afford the rent, you, you don't have a job. Yeah. That is not the that case. Not so the I'm case. glad that you said mm -hmm. that because a lot of our clients at Legal Aid, they have a job. Yes. Right? They, they have a job. They, they want to pay. They want to stay in their apartments. They, they want to be able to pay for their groceries. Mm -hmm. And they just can't. The, mm -hmm. the cost of living has gone so high. so high. The cost of rent has gone so high that they can't afford it even with their paychecks. Right? Um, and one of the biggest things that I think also not just the cost, but if people have previous evictions, right? Um, and eviction stays on your record for the rest of your life in Florida. So yeah. as soon as it's filed, even if they never got evicted mm -hmm. in the past, mm -hmm. but they had a case filed against them, mm -hmm. that stays on the record. Yeah. And anybody, I know you just mentioned the background mm -hmm. checks. Anyone that does a background check can find that. It's yeah. public record. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for a lot of people to be able to get into an apartment. Right, That's or correct. to even buy a home. Mm -hmm. they, they run the credit, it mm -hmm. comes out on the credit. Um, apart from the evictions and the renting aspect, have you also gotten a lot of constituents talking to you about buying a home and not being able to buy a home because of the cost of the homes, the interest rates? Is that something that you've yes. also seen? Yes, yes, and you know, um, during this COVID and all of, you know, the issues that we all went through. It's not only, you know, homeless people or, no, everybody. We all went through yes. this COVID. Mm -hmm. And thanks God to Legal Aid, I have to say, when they jump in and they help us with, you know, avoiding a lot of evictions, because it was like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And I know you all were like, oh my God, it's too much. But that's oh, exactly no, no. what's happening. But, but guess what? Not only people that didn't pay the rent, but people that they couldn't pay the mortgage also, Mm -hmm. Are in trouble right now, and guess what? Well, if you if you get evicted from a you know an apartment, well, you can get another apartment. Yes, you have to pay more. Yes, it, like you said, it's gonna get in your record or whatever. But you know that's when legal aid came in and you know tried to help and avoid all that issues of you know getting that eviction in your record and so. But the people that have mortgage, their own home, if they lose their home. They have to wait more than seven years before they can buy another house. Correct. So right. those are the people that we had also to protect, right? So there was some, you know, services and some funds coming from the state. But still, it's exactly what you said. It, what are we going to do now when all these evictions, or, or, you know, the people that were evicted, or, you know, we couldn't avoid it or, or, you know, whatever legal issues came in, it was, you know, late. Because that's another thing. Mm -hmm. People leave things for the last minute. Yes. <laughs> and and that's what put us in like in the in the edge right there, like okay, I maybe have some services to help you but not for tomorrow or not for tonight. I can help Correct. you like if you give me time. They mm -hmm. wait until the last minute. And we get that a lot at legal aid, right? unfortunately. I always say the best thing is to be proactive. Yeah, exactly. Right? Come mm -hmm. in before you're saying, Hey, I might not be able to do my pay I'm I might not be able to pay next month. What can I do? What are the exactly. rights? Mm -hmm. What's gonna happen before mm -hmm. it's even filed? But we do get people with a twenty four hour writ. Yes. You know, they they have to leave in twenty four hours and there's not a lot that we can do at the time mm -hmm. legally, but mm -hmm. at least we can advise them, right? So it's always yes. good to have that community education. Yes. And that's one of the biggest things that we do too at Legal Aid. Yes. Community education. I'm a big supporter of that because yes. if you know your your rights you mm -hmm. can either avoid something mm -hmm. or at least know what to do in the situation right um and i know for, for mortgages a lot of people have had their homes for years and it's a lot less That's expensive yes. than the rent now. Yeah, right now so have you seen that too where people yes. lost their homes and now yes. they have to pay a thousand dollars more, two thousand dollars more yes. than their mortgage and rent yes so That's, that's correct been, that mm -hmm. they you know they i mean it, it's too much it's everything is like Okay, well, what I do now, so that's when we all, as you know, professional, as 
people, you know, public servant that we serve the communities when we, like you said, the first important thing is education, educate mm -hmm. them. Okay, let's go this way, train them, what, what, what we can do. So that way also they, I mean, what I'm saying is we want them to be independent. Like, right. hey, you know, we're gonna help you now. And yes, 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 but this is not the only crisis that's gonna be coming to you know, our community. And so COVID, you know, we have the hurricanes, the storms, mm -hmm. and everything. So we need to like manage. And, and that's when education right. comes in. We will help, we will, but like you said, let's pre be proactive. Let's make things, you know, it, it, to work better and, and to, you know, prevent. Prevent it. Yeah, and, and, and I help. completely agree. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. Uh, we'd like to take a moment to share a few messages with you and uh, to recognize a few of our generous sponsors. We'll be right back. It's the domino effect. It is perpetual goodness. You help one person, you're helping that person's children, that person's parents, that person's loved ones, that person's community, other taxpayers, people they encounter, people they don't encounter. It's continuous, it's never ending. Welcome back to The Domino Effect. I have Commissioner Gomez Cordero here, um, and I want to highlight another very important issue, apart from our housing, is our seniors and the yes. vulnerability, mm -hmm. right, that they have in our community. What have you seen has been the biggest challenge for our, our seniors in oh, Central yeah. Florida? That's a very good one. Senior, I am very pro of the seniors. I love seniors. When I, when I, when I deal with one of the seniors or when I have to, to be with them, I always think of my parents. I know oh. that will happen to you too. Me too, Because yes. we, we always say, well, I serve um, you know, the senior mom or dad or, or whatever is, you know, like serving my my own mom and dad. And I am very, you know, I, I care for them. I really love them. But one of the main issues that anywhere I go, they always come is that they don't have no clue about, you know, the technology. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to go online and fill an application. They they don't have computers. And so unless they have a granddaughter, grandson or daughter Someone. or somebody that really care and, and, and have the time, well, they will fill it for them, but if not, they have to go to the community centers, which in Orange County we have, in the community, in all community centers, uh, we have someone that has a computer that will oh, help them to, to yeah. fill application when we have all these services that they, you know, um, could apply for. But that's a, a main thing. And if not, well, they call our office and we will try to do it through online and so. Um, but we try not to, just because they have a lot of, um, you know, confidential information that we don't want right. to be, you know, um, crossing that line, let's put it that way. Or, you know, uh, because everything that goes into, you know, it's our like computers computer, yes. is, it is a public out, right. record and we want to protect them as well. But yeah, that's most of the, of the you know, issues and concerns the technology that the they don't know how to issues. fill an application they don't know how to text they don't know how to answer you know like a message in in, in the in the phone right. they know how to answer like oh hi but they don't even know how to they don't know you know text and so out. and yeah. i can say i mean it, 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 it's not bad to say i mean remember that technology have been growing like, i don't fast. know a lot of things either you know and me, i cannot yes me but either. that's why we are there <laughs> for them you know as as a public serve you know serving and people that will serve to the public, to the constituents, to the residents, that's when we, you know, hands on and help them hands to get through because there's a lot of um, services and, and information out there for the seniors. And you know, sometimes another thing is that they feel lonely. Yeah. A lot of they feel lonely mm -hmm. and that's when we have to go in and, and say, you know what, we are here. So we, we do bingos for them, we do dancing. Crazy. Yes, uh, uh, what, what do we do for them? A lot of things and they love it. They love it, they love it, they love it. There is something in, in, in Navidad, in Christmas, that mm -hmm. we do pa el parrando, the parranda, oh, like the, when you sing yeah. a song, mm -hmm. they love it. <laughs> and I do that with them. Oh, and they love it and they dance and then we have prizes and so but they love it they like domino and so and that makes them you know I feel part of the community part of the community whole, but right? you know knowing and, and and meeting other seniors and then they you know they make friends and then they go yes i mean and that's why we are there for we cannot leave them we have to be there for them and and it's important and some of them have a lot of rental issues why mm. because they already said they already have a budget. They already have social security or they retirement money. They have the mm -hmm. limited. And all these, 
you know, rent coming up, increasing, you know, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, they don't have, they can, and they, they can, they cannot it. make it. And we having a lot of these seniors calling our offices that they're going to be, you know, evicted, evicted or they're going to be, you know, turned down from their, you know, um, rent, their apartment because they don't have the income, the income to support that high rent that is coming in. That's one thing. The other thing is, oh, I pay the rent or, or, and, and I don't eat. Mm -hmm. So then they go to senior first. But guess what? A lot of them, the social security was increased. But then that increased also the number of they receiving food stamps. So now oh, they are wow. not entitled to food stamps. So that when now we see all these food, you know, distribution and all these pantry and so filled of, you know, of, of, of seniors because the, it's not enough they can't afford to, it. to buy the groceries and so on, you know, is the recession and all very the, expensive. After the, the pandemic, exactly. especially very expensive. And I know you, you brought up two great points, feeling lonely. A lot of um, seniors feel lonely. I believe during the pandemic there, there was a program mm -hmm. that we would call, and I know that legal aid was yes. part of it. We would call the seniors and just have a chat, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I know that was huge for a yes. lot of people that yes. a lot of them didn't really have family, mm -hmm. right? They Sat had them. nobody, it was just them. Mm -hmm. Their spouse had passed away. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they didn't have any kids, or mm -hmm. if they did, they didn't live in Florida. A lot of the traveling was you know, yeah. cut, you, yeah. you, you couldn't fly. Um, so that was a big thing. Mm -hmm. And I know that Orange County was a big a part of that as well. Uh, another big thing that you said, the, the rent increases, right? Mm, increases. For us, we get a lot of seniors as well. And yes. we partner with Seniors First too, yes. mm -hmm. um, to address all of those issues, housing, yes. anything that they would need. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these seniors are taking care of their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Have you have you seen that too? Where oh, they're yes. trying to take care of the oh, grandchildren yes. as oh, yes. well oh, on yes. the fixed income. Yes, uh, that's a big thing. And yes. on a personal story, I know someone where I live. She she's on a fixed income. She had to sell her house and she had a mortgage mm. and she couldn't afford it. Mm. She had to sell it. She was gone. She's like, hey, I gotta go. I can't mm -hmm. afford it. Um, and I think she moved in with uh, like her kids because she couldn't afford to pay rent. That's what I was gonna Too tell high. you. She couldn't afford it either. That's what I was gonna bring up too because what happened is that they wanted to be independent mm -hmm. well they have the social security coming or they have the retirement you know payment coming and they wanted to be independent but guess what they are returning back to the or calling their kids their kids and yes. say look i cannot afford this can i go and live with you you know they want to be independent but they can't because they cannot afford the rent mm -hmm. or, or or they pay the rent and they don't eat or they don't pay the light bill or something and and you know I have to say, now we, and, and you know, I get a little bit tears with that because now we as, you know, the kids, the children that they, you know, they did for us during our, you know, when we were kids, when our we were time, teenagers right? and our time and they pay for our, you know, sc school and, and college, it's time to, you know, get get back to them to get back and give them, yeah. you know, that, that love that they need and not for them to feel so lonely if they, you know, had kids and now. And now, they only yeah, meet right. when it's Christmas or when exactly. it's Thanksgiving and during the day or the whole year, I call you once a month or whatever, that's... And I know it must be mm -hmm. hard too to yeah, go back, yeah. Could go to back. not be yes. independent. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm pretty sure in their entire life, like, oh, I can't wait to retire, yes. just have my own place mm -hmm. and space. And now they're seeing themselves mm -hmm. going back, mm -hmm. right, to their kids. Mm -hmm. How, so I've seen it in my area uh, w with housing and mm -hmm. seniors where they go back yeah. to, to their kids, they're maybe renting an apartment mm -hmm. and the landlord sees somebody else that's yes. not on a lease yes. or anything mm -hmm. or something like that. How, have you seen that where people have yes. called in and said, mm -hmm. hey, I'm getting evicted because my parents yes. are living with, with yes. me now. Yes, that's why we have to, you know, we have to follow the rules also. We cannot just, you know, okay, Let's talk to the manager. Let's talk to the property manager or so from the complex or from the apartments, right? And let them know because I think you have a time, dates that you can you can have them, seven days, I think, yes, no more than like ten. A time, right, ten right. But just let's tell them, look, she's having this problem, my mom or my dad and so she's sick, whatever. I'm I'm trying to manage in these days to see what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna keep you post. Just keep, you know, in that communication, that right. open line with the with the property managers and so because it's important that we follow the rules. We cannot just hide, okay, don't come in the morning, <laughs> don't don't come out in the afternoon, don't come right. out come out after <laughs> eight. Don't do that. You know, that's that's not good either that, you know, really create and increase your anxiety and stress because you don't want, yes. you know, and then it's, then you receive a letter, oh, you're going to be evicted because you have somebody else. No, just be honest. Just tell them because they, they, some of them know, you know, how to, 
maybe help you and say, you know what, well, I think you need a, bi a bigger right. apartment, or I think, you know, we can, or she can go to this way, because that's another thing. Seniors are very important for us, and I know they are. And um, there are a lot of um, construction projects, and so they have been opening, and it's more for independent for living and, 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 you know, living facilities and so for seniors. And, and, and it's important that they know that. You so know, it's that we can give them that out information. There, right? yes. They just yes. have to find they it. They have to find um, it. So thank it's you. It's so a waiting much. list, but <laughs> oh, oh yes, I'm sure. I think there's a waiting list on everything I nowadays, know. right? Yes. Especially for low income. So yes. thank you so much, Commissioner. Okay. Uh, we have another break before we begin our final topic: legal aid services for our Spanish-speaking clients. Can health insurance help cure loneliness? Can it take care of your best friend too? Or hold your hand for nine months? Can it be there for you at 3 a.m.? Or inspire you to go the extra mile? We think so. Which is why every day we ask ourselves, what else can health insurance do? Come find out. I understood his background and where he was coming from being in the military. Uh, and having that background myself, I knew he needed to feel me out and see what kind of guy I was before he was going to trust me to handle his situation. So I, as I would have in the military, I gave it to him like it is and then said, now that you know that, let's go see what kind of deal we can make. That's the reward at the end of the day. It's not about money. It's not about prestige. It's about making a difference in somebody's life. After my 20 years in the military, trusting somebody, like I trust Jay and he take care of me, it's kind of hard for me to trust anybody. He's a good, very good man, very good man. He's like one of my buddies in the military. I can turn my six, which is my back, and I, I know I can trust him. He won't do no harm. He gonna help me out. Bienvenidos. Florida Central es un lugar donde muchas personas quieren venir. Por las diferencias de personas que viven aquí, eh, muchas de, de nuestros residentes del condado de Orange hablan español. Y es importante que ellos sepan los servicios que tienen en el condado de Orange, especialmente legales, que están en español. Comisionadora, ¿usted cree que las personas tienen acceso a las cortes en español, a recursos legales en, el, en español también? Sí, sí. Y, y tengo que dar fe de eso. Eh, hay intérprete uh -huh. en las cortes. O sea, si usted tiene algún juicio, alguna situación, tiene este un intérprete ¿verdad? que le facilita uh -huh. lo que diga el juez, lo que diga el abogado. Usted contesta según lo que diga uh -huh. el intérprete, que le ¿verdad? Uh -huh. eh, traduce lo que diga en la corte. So, ese servicio está... También está el servicio, el Legal Aid, por ejemplo, eh, donde tenemos personas de habla hispana como usted, pero también muchos de los, de los panfletos, de los flyers, de la información está en español, que la pueden leer. También pueden hablar con, con los empleados que son bilingües, que hablan español. So, hay muchos servicios que se están ¿verdad? organizando para el habla español, para las personas. Especialmente lo que estábamos hablando uh -huh. de los seniors, que hay muchos seniors que, que no, no saben eh, inglés. Te pueden entender si hablas, ¿verdad? Como slow, despacito, despacito uh -huh. las palabras en inglés, pero no te las saben expresar. Eso expresar. pueden uh -huh. entender, no se pueden expresar, o pueden expresarse y no, no saben cómo, ¿verdad? Y si están diciendo lo correcto, eso es importante siempre que haya una traducción, que haya un intérprete, y por eso muchos de los documentos que tenemos en el condado y de los flyers, o sea, de los, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Eh, los panfletos que damos afuera de servicios son con ¿verdad? traducido español al español, inglés. Eh, sí, Perfecto. para que puedan, este, porque tenemos una mayoría, o sea, de, de hispanos mudándose para aquí, de uh -huh. otros estados, de Puerto Rico, de Sudamérica, que se están mudando aquí para la Florida Central. Uh -huh. Y lo podemos ver. Ustedes van a los parques temáticos, a diferentes restaurantes, y usted ve y que de, de tres, dos hablan español. Uh -huh. ¿Verdad que sí? <risa> y, 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 y se escucha uno con otro hablando español. Por eso es importante siempre pues, eh, considerarlos a ellos, porque son residentes en, nuestro, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. en nuestra área. 
Y ellos aportan a nuestra comunidad. Ellos aportan porque ellos trabajan, porque rinden su, su, ¿verdad? su ingreso, sus su planillas aquí, donde dan, pagan sus taxes aquí, y también donde tienen negocios, son dueños de negocios, son médicos, son gente profesionales que están aquí y muchos de ellos no saben expresarse, pero eh, lo entienden. Pero es eh, por eso es bien importante, siempre que estamos en la comisión, siempre estamos, ¿verdad? Que, eh, bueno, está esto en español, pues hay que traducirlo. Y, y los servicios se le dan en español, los servicios de energía eléctrica. Hay unos fondos mm. que se le ayudan para que puedan este pagar su, su, su cuenta, sus biles, ¿verdad? De, oh, wow, de sí. sus utilidades okay. de la luz. Eso está en español también, se le da en español. Okay. La ayuda de la renta. Para que Ustedes entender. saben que estuvimos con lo del COVID, vinieron unos grants, unos fondos para ayudarle con la renta, Mucho, muchas de las cosas y las aplicaciones en español. En español so, todo esto okay. es para darle a ellos, sin menospreciar el creol, el portugués y los otros idiomas que uh -huh. hay aquí, el mandarín, todo eso también todo. Se, se va a trabajar, pero la mayoría de la minoría, la mayoría son hispanos y todo se está traduciendo al español. Qué bueno que estaba diciendo eso sobre los otros idiomas también, porque uh -huh. en Legal Aid cogemos muchos sí. idiomas tenemos lo que se llama un language line yes. no es una es una línea un servicio sí. que si nosotros no tenemos a alguien en la oficina en ese mo momento que necesita ayuda o sí, necesita la línea, hacer la lo, aplicación lo nosotros llamamos así podemos eh, entenderlo no sí. yo pienso que a mí no, yo mi primer lenguaje fue español yo uh -huh. yo vine de, de Cuba tenía cinco años uh -huh. Oh, uh -huh. my God. No yeah. le voy a decir cuántos años tengo ahora. Pero, <risa> Muy linda. Um, uh -huh. Pero yo no sabía tan, tan, tampoco nada. Mis padres no sabían el inglés. Mi mamá todavía, ella es, como dijo, entiende, pero no puede hablarlo para tratar de, de co co comunicarse, ¿no? Okay. Es más difícil para ella sí. hablar que entender. Ella puede entender mucho más de lo uh -huh. que yo creo que, sí. que entiende, pero no puede hablar. Sí. Um, y para ella es más fácil y se siente más cómodo. ¿no? Yo, yo creo que la cultura hispana le gusta sí. tener esa eh, amistad, sí. sentirse cómodo con uh -huh. todo lo que hacen. Uh -huh. Si quieren ir a, a la tienda, si busca ayuda legal, cu cualquier cosa, ellos quieren a alguien que hablan ese idioma, yeah, ¿no? ese idioma. Una cara que pueden uh -huh. ver y decir, oh, wow, mira, es alguien como yo. Sí. ¿no? Y así um, mismo están en todas las tiendas. Tú uh -huh. vas a las tiendas por departamento, sin mencionar nombres, pero en todas ellas tú oyes a alguien hablando habla español, español. espérate, uh -huh. por aquí uh -huh. me voy. Porque uno se, donde se sienta más cómodo va. Y Exacto. eso está bien. Yo creo que por eso es que yo recibo también muchas llamadas en mi oficina de todo Orange County. Yo recibo llamadas hasta de gente de Miami. Tú, que dijiste que oh, wow. de gente Miami. de Miami, porque okay. salgo mucho en la radio. Oh, en la okay. radio que, que ¿verdad? En los shows cubren desde, desde Miami hasta, qué sé yo, Jacksonville o más. Oh, wow. Y la gente llama. Y la gente llama. Sí, porque yo hablo mucho de los fondos y de las ayudas que tiene el condado para nuestra gente de Central Florida, de Orange County. De Orange okay? County. Porque es importante que sepan que cada condado tiene sus propios su, grants su propio y sus propios fondos. Uh -huh. Pero es más o menos lo mismo. Tú sabes que ellos pueden llamar a su este, representante, a su eh, eh, oficial electo y pedirle información de lo que está pasando. Y por eso a mí me gusta, porque muchos de nosotros de los hispanos <risa> dejamos las cosas a veces por última hora. Tú sabes, sí. no somos, uh -huh. nos prevenimos. Nosotros, no prevenimos. espérate, que mañana Queremos. es el deadline, hoy lleno. Yeah. Y entonces, pues, estamos con ese corre y corre. Uh -huh. Pero eh, lo bueno es que, que estén pendientes, que estén pendientes. Por eso es que siempre salgo en la radio, salgo en diferentes ¿verdad? emisoras y en diferentes programas. Y siempre estoy en las redes sociales, pero es para informarle al pueblo lo que está pasando, lo que hay, los fondos que hay para que apliquen, para que puedan ¿verdad? solicitar. Y así con los pequeños ayuda. negocios y todo. No, mira, hay un, 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 una inmensidad de de ayudas para las personas que de otro idioma, que hablan español claro, o que hablan de otro, uh -huh. pero las hay. Lo que tienen es que, miren, que llamar y conectarse, exacto. Que salir a buscar. Y qué bueno que trae ese punto, porque creo que nosotros hemos hablado de esto en cada segmento en que las personas dejan todo hasta el final. Hasta el final. Ignoran el papel que le mandan en el correo, mira, tiene que pagar esto, o mira la visión, o mira exacto. lo otro. Y dejan todo hasta el final y uh -huh. llaman y dicen, oh, ¿qué vamos a hacer? So, es bien importante, eso igual para la, la comunidad hispana, cualquier, co cualquier comunidad co de decirle, uh -huh. mire, tienen que no ignorar las uh -huh. cosas que le, que le llegan al correo, los papeles, oh, uh -huh. eso no va a pasar nada, está bien, qué sé yo. Sí, y uh -huh. es bien importante buscar los lugares donde le pueden ayudar. Exacto. ¿no? Como digo, Ley, nosotros, como le dije, desde la persona que contesta el teléfono, habla español. Lo, uh -huh. Los abogados, co como yo, uh -huh. hablamos español. Um, y hay 
yo sé que en la corte a veces todo lo que se pone en la corte tiene uh -huh. que ser en inglés, ¿no? Porque estamos sí, acá porque estamos. y ellos tienen que uh -huh. entenderlo a en inglés. So, es importante y es una cosa que nosotros hacemos, es que si no hablan inglés, nosotros le decimos lo que dice todos esos papeles. Uh -huh. Si tienen que estar en inglés, ¿no? Si, sí. O si, ya, si no hablan inglés, que tienen que sí. estar en inglés, porque es importante que sí. ellos sepan y que se informen, ¿no? Es una cosa que siempre estamos hablando, informar sí, al mismo. Público. La educación, la educación informal, el entrenamiento de todo lo es que está bien pasando. importante. Um, so yo sé que es yo verdad, lo hago. yo sé inglés y, y, y sé leerlo y sé uh -huh. hablarlo, pero hay términos legales que yo no entiendo. Exacto. Y yo pido un intérprete. Exacto. Eh, tú sabes, explíqueme en esto. Porque no, no porque uno es la comisionado, este, uno no lo sepa, sabe pero, todo. Yeah. Eh, uh -huh. Es que no se sienta, o sea, que la gente no se sienta como que cohibido. Ay, mira, yo no sé inglés. No, si usted no sabe, no sabe. Y aunque usted uh -huh. sepa y usted necesita un intérprete, usted lo pide. Y que Usted no se sienta pide. con miedo, porque hay muchas miedo, personas exacto. que le dan miedo, ese miedo de, ay, tengo que pedir ayuda, exacto. no quiero preguntar, que la gente crea que yo no sé. Mira, no sé eso yo, pasa con lo, cuando pero... piden ayuda para la luz. Uh -huh. Saben que le van a cortar la luz, ¿verdad? Vamos a suponer mañana le van a cortar la luz. Pues hoy llaman a la oficina de nosotros porque no han podido conectar con la oficina, que cómo puede, porque mañana le cortan, pero ¿por qué lo dejas para mañana? Danos Llama el tiempo, hoy. porque acuérdate que no eres el único que vives en el condado uh -huh. que está pidiendo esta ayuda. Eso es importante que lo hagan con tiempo. Mira, me dieron hasta este día y este día no tengo el dinero. Y es una semana antes, así nos da tiempo. Porque tiempo eso arreglarlo. ese dinero va pagado directamente a la luz. O sea, uh -huh. ese no es un dinero que se le da al, al consumidor. Eso se le da directamente a la compañía a, a la de luz, compañía. Al, que, al, que, al que usted le deba. Para, para evitar que se la corten, pues entonces vamos ya a bien. hacer las cosas con tiempo. Uh -huh. Muchas gracias por estar acá hoy como comisionadora. Yo sé que eh, su tiempo es bien valioso y de verdad que estamos bien con, contentos que pudo estar acá. Gracias. Y yo creo que aprendemos mucho gracias. hoy, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. De todas las, las ayudas que hay y sí. las cosas que se pueden hacer acá en el condado de Orange. Muchas gracias. Fue un placer hablar con la comisionadora Gómez Cordero en este episodio del Domino Effect. Y apreciamos lo que hace por el condado de Orange y también por el Legal Aid Society. Muchas gracias. The Legal Aid Society has existed for over 60 years, providing legal representation to clients on issues similar to those discussed in this episode. It is imperative that the community knows when faced with legal troubles, you are and should still be able to receive high quality legal representation and access to justice regardless of your income. If you reside in Orange County District 4 and have questions about your local laws and regulations, you may contact Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero's office by calling 407-836-5881. If you are seeking assistance on a legal matter, you may contact the Legal Aid Society law firm by calling 407-841-8310. The Legal Aid Society is a nonprofit law firm that relies greatly on volunteerism and donations. For more information on how you can support this worthy organization, visit LegalAidOCBA.org today. Thank you for tuning into this episode of The Domino Effect. And remember, perpetual goodness goes a long way. See you soon.